Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Curtis, who's a retired man who has, loves camping and loves getting into the backcountry. He spent a lot of time here in Colorado, I'm in Leadville right now, and he spent a lot of time here uh, exploring and getting to know the area. And we're going to see his gorgeous Dodge 4x4 pickup and the uh, trailer he pulls that will let him go virtually anywhere he wants to go. Of course, there's limitations on a, on a big pickup, but within those limitations, he can go anywhere he wants. And I just think he's got an amazing setup. And if getting into the backcountry is most important to you, this is something to consider. So let's go meet him and take the tour. So, hi Curtis, uh, you're just retired and becoming a full-time nomad, is that right? Yep, this is day 13. Day 13, but you've been a long-time camper. Oh, yes. So, and that's why you have a, uh, a four-wheel drive Dodge pickup, so you can go camping where you want. Yes, want to go get to where people aren't. And uh, y y are you married? Yes, my wife's in Texas, uh, she loves driving a school bus and that's where she's at now, so come come summer break go back and get her and we'll be back out here for the summer and I hope and maybe this will be her last year I don't know we'll just have to wait and see she can maybe retire yeah so why don't you uh, take the tour and show us how you live here in your four-wheel drive pickup okay um, this is uh, my 2002 1500 Dodge 4x4 four four. we nicknamed it Billy Goat uh, Billy for short because we're constantly in the rocks and climbing mountains, so it seemed appropriate. Uh, not much. Just a standard Dodge pickup. Yeah, automatic. Dual cab. The dual cab gives you an awful lot of room in there. Yes. Uh, we're thinking. Uh, I'm thinking about taking the rear seats out and putting them in storage for the time being, and and building a different kind of setup for the for the groceries because this is my, my grocery area uh, most because we don't want any bears everything we we try to keep locked up the cooler is not really a cooler we just use it to store the bread and uh, stuff that other insects and in that might get into being uh, being longtime campers here in Colorado you're all too familiar with bears yeah we had a close call last year I don't want to repeat it. And I noticed you have uh, solar. Yes, it's a 300 watt system we just put on. Uh, all we actually run is a refrigerator, a winter refrigerator, and charge our cell phones and a laptop occasionally. We've got uh, about 100 to 150 amp hour worth of two batteries in the back. We use Billy mostly for our chuck wagon and utility truck. Uh, we've got our big refrigerator on a kind of a homemade slide. Works pretty good so far. I'm oh, that works great. Comes right out. Yeah. Get to it. Uh, your winter 65 quart. Yes. Very, it has been through a lot. It is, I recommend it very much. It, it has been through a lot. Yeah, when you have a rig called Billy Goat, you probably have not been kind to it. No, it's, it's been bounced around a little bit. Um, solar chargers there. Have lots of storage. I originally built this just for me uh, to get up in the woods and camp by myself. But then the wife got into it, so it's now a full-time rig. Got these open up. Uh, storage all the way around, a big U-shape. Batteries are up front. There's an air compressor with a three gallon tank up there for airing the tires back up after uh, we get off and when we come back on road from the off roading. And so, this is your garage essentially, storage. Yeah, pretty much. And you're actually uh, living out of your trailer. Yes. Was it a 70, 76 Ford eight, uh, long bed? It was a half ton. Uh, we pulled the axle out of it and stuck a regular 3,500 pound axle underneath it with brakes because I didn't want to be going up and down trails with with a big heavy trailer behind me with no brakes. I put a tarp on it during the day when the sun's up high to keep the heat out of it. A white tarp? I've got a bigger one for when it rains so we have a we can make a porch on the one side and out the back 
it's a 16 by 20. So you've got the long uh, tongue. Yes. Which gives you tons of storage, literally. Yeah, I had, uh, that's another modification after we bought it. That and a uh, trailer hitch. And propane yeah. tanks on the side here. Yeah, One. usually a propane here. It's over on the side for the water here. That's everything, everything that needs for the trailer, the wheel chocks, uh, um, water hose for the water tanks, the electrical supply for the water pump. Nice, nice setup. I'm, and and I would guess somewhat inexpensive. Ah. Uh, Although by turning it, buying a regular one and turning it into an, a boulder rig, that was probably some money. Yeah, I mean, I, the trailer had more problems with it after we got it home than I originally thought it had. You know, I, I knew it had some problems, but I was like, eh. You know, a retired auto mechanic for 30 years, nothing's too bad. So you could have probably bought a, a cheap pop-up, used pop-up for what I've got in it. But you would have torn that to pieces right away. Oh yeah. It would never have endured where you've gone. No. They wouldn't have had the ground clearance. Big aggressive tires because of course you yeah. go in the really rough back country. Big old twenties, yeah. And if you look there you can see see how much ground clearance there is with that axle under oh, there. Man, yeah. And then big tires. It's just huge under there. Yeah. And so this is home. Yeah. This is home. This is uh I call it a boot. It's a tent. And so your tailgate is down. Yep. And your uh, shell hood is up, which extends the bed a lot. Yes. What's well, a tailgate? Two feet? Yeah, probably. So, yeah, it gives it another, it's a nice little sitting area right now for one person. For uh, if it starts raining in the middle of the day when I don't have the big tarp up. It's got a big queen size bed, eight inch uh, foam mattress. So you and your wife yep. sleep comfortably in here. Oh yeah. Not, not a lot of headroom. Well, no, not, you can sit up, it's not bad, but. And lots of storage underneath. Yeah, it's my clothes bins and uh, um, a big iron table for with a windbreaker. And uh, Mr. Buddy here, because it's oh, been yeah. pretty cool at night here, oh, here yeah. in Leadville, Colorado, at 10,000 feet. And you can see that's the tailgate back here. And then the, the tent flap goes way over and really opens it up. Tell us uh, uh, about that, where you got it from? Um, Camp Moore was where I found this uh, Boot, as I call it. It's uh, made by DAC Incorporated, uh, Louisiana. A full-size camper top tent. 150 bucks. That was that's an incredible steal. Yeah, 150 sure. bucks for this. Because you know we, including uh, netting and everything you need to really give you a lot more room. Three bungee cords takes less than it's about five minutes and it's on. And it it. Keeps the water out. Okay, the uh, two questions I have to ask where people uh, get upset with me is, uh, well, three questions, I guess. So you're retired. That's how you're supporting yourself. Yes. And your wife is working towards retirement, Will, soon. Yes. And how do you go potty? Right behind you in our utility potty shower tent. So you just use a standard old potty tent. Yep. And what do you use inside the potty tent? Uh, the medic uh porta potty five gallon so just a yeah a portable potty porta potty yep you uh fill it up as until it gets too full you take it you dump it yep it it seems to be the easiest way for us we thought about doing a, a cargo trailer conversion but but still you know seven foot wide still eight and a half foot wide you know with the tires on the ground so that that wouldn't work uh, we're probably going to get one custom made next year or two so that we so can that it's have, narrower. Yeah, yeah. It's seven foot wide. The truck. So it's follow right behind the truck, and then we'll have it custom made to where the axles are underneath it. You know, the tires and all are underneath it, and it'll be up in the air. And 
and you get the height yeah. more height than you have yeah now. i'll be able to walk in we'll have a nice indoor shower and in a in a bathroom and and so showers that's another question i have to always ask but you have your shower tent and you just go in there yep oh but you do something especially nice yeah. for showers we what's have, that we have hot water hot water hot water it's over here on the other side Our instant on hot water here. oh my that's heaven on earth for a camper Yes, it is. But now you're going full time, so this is camper for the rest of your life. Yep. So, made an extra long hose and put a, just a regular old sprayer on it for dishes. Dishwasher sprayer. And uh, that way I can turn it on and off. You can turn it on, you do what you need to do, you let go, you're done. It works really well. And uh, it's right here by the uh, potty tent, it goes right inside. Yep, goes right up in this little slot here. And it's on demand, so you just, uh, you have your uh, propane bottle is over here. Yep. Hose goes across. And the echo temp. You got a propane flame adjustment and then a water flow control. That way you can adjust the temperature because it will, it, it will, depending upon what the water temperature is going in, it, get, it can get pretty hot coming out. Now these have to have a pump, so you have to have a pump. Mm-hmm. I got a regular RV pump up underneath it. Um, right, you have tanks that you've mounted under the trailer. Yes. So I, 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 I did a lot of measuring and a lot of searching for for water for a water tank that would fit in a certain location couldn't find one that was what i wanted so the only way i could get what get close to what i wanted was to put two tanks underneath it and then build build a box for it and and uh, run the plumbing down to it plumbing the inlets on the other side the eco temp and it goes down and they to a splitter and they both fill at the same time and they come up and they the vents hooked together so there's no vapor locking or anything you know one tank won't fill the, the both fill at the same time that is really a sweet setup you've been satisfied with your echo temp yes we've had that uh for a year it works works really good inside out here a little a breeze now and then will blow it out um but on a, on a nice day i mean even like today yeah i could probably go in there and take a really nice hot shower and i have a problem Right, because you have the solar to run the battery. No, there's no electric here at all, is there? Mm -mm. Just propane. Yeah. Pro well, well, the, a little bit for the water pump. Yeah, electric for the water pump, and I got some cigarette outlets in there for running some 12 volt stuff and charging the phones right. and that at night. And the wife's got a O2 cool fan that runs on, on that. So. So you, you you have 300 watts of solar, but that's more than enough for you. Yeah. The fridge would be your big draw. Right. It uh, I've got a switch right here. Stupid trash. It turns it on. And I hear now we can hear it just like any or it is an RV pump. Yeah. But it works real good. Water outlet here. Which... Well man, you've got a great setup here, Curtis. I just am very impressed. Thank you. Thank you much. It's like I don't know. I don't know. It's been good so far. I mean it's only got we had two months in the summer and then 13 days on it and so We'll, we'll see like maybe next year how well it's doing so far it seems to be all right i'm got no complaints well with your years of experience with a lot of trial of error you know what you want and you've accomplished getting it for yourself yeah pretty much really really nice thank you well thanks for sharing us uh, i know there's a lot of people out there for who getting into the backcountry and real uh, backcountry camping is very important and this is a perfect example of how to do it reasonably yeah um, I mean the only other way would be you know the ground tent or a rooftop tent and because you are a couple right. you're not going to be able to carry enough stuff in a truck with a rooftop tent no and camping and if you're gonna go camping you gotta have camping gear yep. there's just no other way around it no you gotta have a stove and lights well, Curtis, thank you so much. I really appreciate your tour. I think you've just done an amazing job here, and it's a, a really great setup. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for doing it. Uh, our pleasure. So all of you out there listen, watching on uh, YouTube, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you later.